Hey, what's up? Today, I'm making a grinder stand. Now, I've already made one of these grinder stands, but I need another, and I figured this would be a good, quick DIY project. So let's get started. Okay, don't mind the messy workshop. It is a disaster area. Got the remnants of about 50 different projects going on. And here's the grinder stand I'm going to be making. Just a simple stand made out of some scrap I already had. I think it works great. Unlike this other grinder stand I have that I hate. And this is the one I'll be replacing. Because I like to have a coarse and fine grinder. But this stand is just, it just, the base is horrible. I tried to put some angle iron to make it better so it wouldn't wobble and move around, but it just, it just, it, we didn't get even close to the level or it's just the floor. It doesn't form to the floor well like, the, like a round stand does. So it's just terrible. I gotta put that shim under there. I hate it. I mean, the, the base, the mount, my spot is wider so it gets in the way when sometimes you have to, you know, grind on stuff. And this one's nice and roomy. And so on. Now, to make this stand, I had this old um, home-built weight bench that I cut up, and here's the parts of it. And you can you don't you don't need to buy you know high-grade steel tubing. You can just use like a fence post or even muffler pipe, probably. But this is what I have, and this is what I'm going to use. I just need to go grab a rim rim from out back, and we'll get started. Oh, and I got to dig out the chop saw. <laughs> Give me a minute. Okay, got my wheel. Another one from that set, so they'll match at least. <laughs> Not that they need to. And I dug out the chop saw. Just need to take some measurements and I can chop that stuff up. I need to clean up this wheel a little bit. I mean, I don't really need to, but I'm just going to knock off the loose rust. And I just remembered I need the angle grinder for that. So I'll grab that here real quick. Um, yeah, it should be down here. Is in here? Yeah, there. It's buried. Ugh. Junk always in the way. Come on. Okay, I got the angle grinder. And one thing right here, don't forget your hearing protection, you know, eye protection, whatnot. Um, I need the wire cup. Right up here. I also need this. I use this to clean up the, I these to clean up the paint, you know, and the pole and stuff, you know, that thing. The old weight bunch piece. So, let me get set up here real quick. Using my last cut with the chop saw. 
timing. And it looks like I'm going to need a new blade for my next project. So, I'll have to put that on one of those on my list. But, I got everything cut up. And pretty much cleaned up. I just used various wire wheels and abrasives. Including, the, actually, ironically, the original grinder stand. Well, grinder on the original stand. Wire wheel and stone. Well, before I unbolted it. <laughs> and... This thing worked pretty good. I forgot I already had one. Well, you can see it's pretty much toast now. So I can save this new one for another project. I'll put. I'll try and find a link to put in the description if you want to check one of those things out. And let's see what else I drilled the holes for the bolts. And let's see here. Can I give you a quick demonstration? Oh, and I ground off the chrome for the spots I'm going to weld it on see that and I pretty much just ground it till I got the straightest I can get I, mean, I don't know if it is right now I'll, I'll, I'll check make sure it's straight before I weld it on there but it looks pretty good to me and basically what I'm gonna do is something like this this of course you know the other way and bolt the grinder to it but this is just to show you how it's going to work out you know before I use the magnets to hold it together and weld it outside because I've already went and <sighs> lost the light so <laughs> it's gonna be kind of hard to show that but we'll see what we we'll see what we get and I'll get this thing welded up oh if you don't have a, a C channel, you could actually just do this for your base. Just you know, weld a couple pieces of angle iron, then weld those angle irons to the rim. You know, instead of putting you know a flat piece across the hole or something like that. So, I mean, I've seen people where they use a flat plate for the for the base, and then a, they weld a flat plate here or make a plate. And I mean, angle iron works. I mean, you don't need to support you know the whole thing, just just the you know the sides. So. We'll get that done, get it all welded up, but I'm going to have to wait for tomorrow to paint it. And speaking of paint, i got to grab that real quick. Take it inside me because it's a little chilly in this room sometimes. Um, what is this? Is it? No, that, that's not it. So, here we go. Give me a few here, and we'll get some welding done. Tomorrow we'll paint it up. All welded up. Not my best welds. My cheap welder was giving me feed issues, but it's all done and it'll work. It's solid. So, time for paint. grinder's been installed on the new stand. Before I turn them on, I want to talk about something real quick. When you set up a grinder or install new stones on the grinder, you need to follow, you should follow a procedure to mark and clock the stone to produce the least amount of vibration. 
And I've already done that for both these grinders, as well as I've dressed them, you know, dressed the wheel with a wheel dresser. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's information online, videos on YouTube that demonstrate this, so check them out. Anyways. Here's what I want to show you. Definitely moving. Now, I could just blame the cheap Harbor Freight grinder, but I know better. I've had this thing for well over a decade and used it sometimes hours at a time until it was too hot to lay your hand on. Plus, when I set up this other grinder, I figured it out. You see, you don't want to crush the little rubber feet under there for your grinder, you want to make sure that it, the grinder base does not make contact with the metal stand and transfer those vibrations. I just used a nylock nut so I could set it tight, but not too tight. Unlike on this grinder, where I use a spring washer and you can clearly see the base makes contact with the stand and transfers its vibrations. I kind of figured that was the case with this old stand, but Eh, I had to see. I figured maybe the round base for the new stand was, was the solution. Guess I was wrong. Now, you can buy new feet for your grinder, and I'm not doing that. But th th there are DIY you know, methods to, to dampen those vibrations. And one of them is to use some rubber hose. I just had this lying around. I've heard people use heater hose or old garden hose but you split it down the middle and stick it on the rim so let's give this a shot I'm making a trip to the hardware store. Okay, I think I got this figured out. It's time to wrap this up. But first, I want to give a quick shout out to Amazon Prime for getting me my replacement welding helmet in just over about a day. I ordered a Bald Eagle and Stars and Stripes. And I got Ghost Rider ripoff. <laughs> so, A for speed, F for style I guess. <laughs> also I got my new chop saw disc. Of course I'll link it in the description but back to this. So I went to my local hardware store. I got about a foot of this rubber big hose. I don't remember the size. I think it was like, no nah, it wasn't three quarters. It was like an inch or something. I don't, I, I should have wrote it down. But anyways, I cut it in two pieces, drilled the hole in the center, and mounted it between the vice, the, bleh, the grinder and the stand. I also got some nylock nuts. So, here we go. Not bad. So, hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Peace out.